Uh, hi everyone, I'm Sebastian Flores. I'm 15 years old and I am the founder and owner of my own business, Octogifts. And today I'm just gonna be walking you through kind of what that means, what I do like on a day-to-day -day basis, how I handle everything like that. And then also how I got started running my business and then also just how I've gotten to where I am today. And then at the end, I'll give you some tips and some advice if any of you want to do what I've done. So my business is called Octogifts. I started it in January of 2019 when I was 13 because I wanted to find a way that I could make money. Obviously, as a 13 year old, I couldn't go out and get a job working at like a restaurant or a grocery store. So I decided I'd rather start my own business and sell something I had made. The very first thing I actually sold were these. You might not, it's not very obvious what this is, but it's a little um, Valentine's Day card. And it's kind of like a box of chocolates, but it's made of paper and plastic and you fill it up with candy through a little hole at the top. And then when you turn this knob here, oops, uh, the candy actually dispenses. So it's really just a fun little uh, Valentine's Day gift that you can give to people. And after those kind of took off when I started selling them, when Valentine's Day was over, I couldn't sell them anymore. So I redesigned it as kind of like an all-purpose uh, basic like gumball machine, which is the kind of thing you'd see like at a movie theater at the grocery store. And I've taken that idea and ran with it. So here I have another one. These are actually sold as part of a fundraiser for my high school. They've got the little school logo and then like the cap and gown, like a cute little tassel on top. They were as part of a fundraiser so I could raise money for the senior class, just they could have like a fun little thing at the end of the year. And then I have this one, which I sold for the holidays as part of a pack of three. It's like a snowman shape. So you can see even got the little top hat that comes off so you can fill it up with candy. Buy these, they come as this plastic envelope here. And I actually, I designed this, all this stuff I've done myself. This was just done in Adobe Illustrator. Um, and the photo I actually took with my phone in a light box I built myself too. So inside this package, there's just all the parts I use to make the machines. And then on the back here, back of this insert, there's a QR code. And if you scan that, it takes you to a page on my website where I've put together some videos that just walk you through how to make them so you can really follow along and just put them together yourself. And making these kits was actually probably the biggest challenge that I faced with this uh, project, well, really, this business, because I had to not only make sure what I was making was something everyone could do, but also make sure it was protected, because if I'm sending out the pieces I'm really exposing my like my secrets, like the how I do everything. So I want to make sure I was protected and everything was legally in place. Um, when I was started this business, really it was really it wasn't a business when I first started it. Uh, it was more of an idea. In January two thousand nineteen, which I mentioned earlier. I wanted to sell things and it was right around Valentine's Day. So I started making this first one. I actually designed this using PowerPoint and then I printed out the pieces on PowerPoint and I cut them out with scissors and assembled the first version of what you just saw. And it was not good. It didn't work at all, but I kept at it. And after I think three or four more iterations, I finally had something that actually worked. So I bought all the red card stock that I needed. And I stayed just using my PowerPoint and scissors cutting out parts. And it took me like two hours to make one. So eventually I found ways I could speed that up. I invested in a desktop cutting machine called a silhouette. So I just, I had the files that I converted from PowerPoint files into these silhouette files. And then I just hit a button and it sends them to the machine and they, the machine cuts out the pieces with a special little knife 
and then you just peel them off and I had them ready and they were much more precise and it was much faster than cutting out by hand. But even that was a little slow when I started getting bigger orders. Um, so I bought special dies, which are basically, it's like a piece of wood and then they have a special blade cut that's really like, so if I had a die for this, the piece of wood would have metal in it, this shape. And then you run it through a press that like compresses it onto a piece of paper and then it cuts it out. So it's really cool and it's really quick. Um, of course, those were expenses. So I had to make sure I, I had to make sure that it was worth it. And then also at first I was selling on Etsy and that was fine. But then I wanted a way that people could actually reach me and they could see uh, separate pages that I made like about myself. So people could really read about my story and my business. So I launched my own website powered by Shopify with a domain I bought on GoDaddy, which was another one of those big projects that really took months to make. And from then I just kept building. So now I have Adobe Illustrator, which is much more professional that I use to design my pieces. And I same, that's the same program I used to design this insert here that goes in the front of all my packages. And I've really come up with all these different tips and manufacturing processes and written like standard operating procedures that I can pump out these kits and large scale orders. Like recently I've gotten a few orders. Like there's a school up in Boston that just ordered a bunch of these for their graduating class, not with this logo, with their own logo on them. But that's the type of thing where it just really helps to be able to make a lot of something quickly or to just have it stocked up. And I was told that a lot of you uh, are interested in entrepreneurship and just running business, which I really think it's it's really been a great experience for me. And the few things that I would tell you if you want to start your own is use the fact that you're young to help people really find you. Because sure, they could go support some faceless organization like Amazon and where it's just a business transaction, or they could go support the young person that lives down the street from them. And obviously they'd rather support the young person. So make sure you really build your story as part of what your brand is. It's part of who you are. So it should be part of what you're selling to. Um, and when you're first getting started, don't worry about how sophisticated everything is. Like I said, I was using PowerPoint to design pieces, which let me tell you is not very efficient. And I was just cutting them out with scissors and really what I was producing was pretty mediocre. But people loved it because I'm young and they were supporting the kid in their neighborhood. I would also tell you, if you really want to find something to sell, you have to find something that you're passionate about something that you're great at or that you want to share with other people. It could be paper cards. It could be chocolates. It could be art. For me, obviously, it was the paper cards. And I think that really came from when I was younger. Um, I was kind of obsessed with origami. So I would spend hours folding pieces of paper into these elaborate shapes. And it really it got to the point where my, my mom just used it as something she would do to keep me occupied but I loved it, so I didn't really care. And that really, that grew into experimenting with other paper. I would try making pop-up cards and I would try just making these really complicated structures like pinball machines out of paper. And of course they didn't always work, but that's not what mattered. I was doing something that I loved, which was this. And now I've turned that into something I can sell and something I love to share with other people. I'd also tell you, remember that everything that you do in your business is yours. So it's what you want to do is your choice. And of course, find people that are older than you, like your parents or older siblings or mentors that you can look to for guidance and help. But ultimately, every decision you make should be yours. So make sure you're doing what you want or else it just kind of starts feeling like a chore. And that's kind of like this past year, I've actually... Um, I've actually been, my, my mom used to be a lot more involved uh, with this, but she recently got a new job. So now I've been taking up more of the responsibility and I've loved it. 
it's really been great to actually have to be in control of everything. It's really like empowering to be able to do everything that you want to do with your business. Hi, Sebastian. I can Leanne here. Has Octogifts changed the career path you want to go down? Um, I've always really wanted to be, both my parents are engineers, so I've always wanted to be an engineer. Uh, I think this really just cemented that. I mean, I've loved creating things since I was like a little kid. I've always loved how things work. Like I would sit by the pool for hours just pouring water back and forth because I loved watching the way it moved. So that's something that's always interested me. So then mechanical engineering has been something that's always drawn me. Like, I think since I was six years old, I always know I want to be a mechanical engineer. So I think this really just kind of cemented that, confirmed for me that this is what I love doing. So now it hasn't really changed everything. What do you think is the most important thing you've learned from starting your own business? I'd say it doesn't really matter how good of a product you're selling. If you don't have people you know that can buy it or people that will help you make connections, that's really the most important thing you can have is connections with other people that will hook you up with like um, new ways to do this or like uh, manufacturing opportunities or even just people like if you know a large school or business that would want to place an order. It just really helps in knowing people, which is why it's nice to get involved with community um, workshops like the like tech development centers or startup accelerators. Tell us more about that. Have you participated in any workshops? Uh, I'm actually a member of ATDC, which is the Atlanta Tech Development Center. So they have these classes on like customer discovery that you go to, and then they walk you through how to find your customer base, how to grow your business. And just, it's like, it's a community of people who are like you who are also starting their business. So it's really nice to be part of that. And then the people there can also really help you find connections, um, help you like just things you wouldn't be able to do on your own. What is something you have struggled with while running Octogus? One of the things I kind of like struggled with, obviously, balancing knowing I have to like produce so many kits with wanting to like go out with my friends or like, um, I don't know, just play video games. It's just, it's hard um, kind of, not, I wouldn't say forcing yourself, but just knowing that you have to, it's a responsibility that you have. So it's a lot of responsibility. Uh, you, I guess I'd say it's even more so than just like going to a job because it's if especially if you're running it out of your own home, there's always distractions around you. So it's hard to not get distracted. And that's something I've kind of struggled with. And it's always also I remember in two, uh, like 2019 when I first started this and I was making all these by hand instead of making them as kits, um, I would sit in the basement for hours just cranking them out while I watch TV or listen to music. And that kind of fizzled a little bit. I kind of, that like fire I had for this kind of dwindled down until recently this year, I was talking a lot with my mom and we kind of, um, she's, she kind of decided she wanted to step away a little more and then give me more responsibility with this. And I think that's really been great for me because I kind of found that fire again it's like this is now this is something I I remember why I loved doing this so much when I was like 13 and I mean I never really stopped it's just I would not have the same like passion for it that I did when I first started so obviously if you're wanting to start a business or something just remember it's really easy to forget why you're doing it. Where do you see Octogifts going in the future? I don't really see myself doing this after I graduate high school. So really, I want to use this. I wanted to use this as something I would just 
save up for college, you know, make money throughout high school. And then, I don't know, use the skills I've learned with this later down the line to maybe start a different business. Thank you so much for sharing with us what it's like to be a young innovator and entrepreneur. Okay, well, thank you all so much for watching this. If you want, you can reach out at my website, which is octogifts.com. That's O-C-T-O-G-I-F-T-S dot com. Or you can email me at info at octogifts.com. Thank you all so much.